Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here. Got the whole family with me. Shalom. And you know it's important when I bring all of these guys in to do a class. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Sabbath day. Mm, okay. Before we get started, I wonder how many people out there know how this YouTube channel got started. Mm, I don't think I even know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never really intended to become YouTube famous or an American Idol or anything like that. I just saw YouTube as a free storage place for me to upload classes that would be viewed later on by my children. Right. I remember. Yeah, that was in the first class. Um, you know, I got children all the way from Baltimore to Las Vegas and all over the place. West Virginia. West Virginia. And YouTube was a place for them to partake in Bible studies at their leisure, family Bible type studies at their leisure. Right. right. And um, YouTube would take care of them, house them, and keep us for us. Mm -hmm. But, of course, the channel has grown over the years, and I believe there is more than just my children listening. Yeah. If you believe a lot of our father's other children are listening as well. But still, the focus is on educating people to Bible principles, right? right? I mean, that's the main thing that we've been doing with this channel since its creation is trying to teach people the scripture. And in this class, I wanted to talk particularly about the Sabbath day and do this class because it seems as though our family was infiltrated here in, on our last Sabbath day. Right. Um, Without going into all of the details, um, it just seems like some events took place um, to kind of wake us up to how we were going about keeping the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And in other words, it was proven to us that we had areas for improvement. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we did was, you know, we went through this. Uh, the book of Jubilee chapter 50 and we looked at some other rules associated with the Sabbath day to make sure that we were in compliance mm -hmm. and I believe we were pretty close mm -hmm. but when I come over here and look at Isaiah chapter 58 um, it appears as though we actually may have a long way to go okay because whereas keeping the rules of the Sabbath day will keep us in compliance what Isaiah 58 is talking about are blessings okay blessings associated with keeping the Sabbath day correctly so what this class is all about are these blessings and how is it that we can get these blessings that we're supposed to get in um, 58 verse 13 and 14 well I never knew that I guess that there were specific blessings. I thought that there were general blessings, you know, that, you know, you be obedient to the Father and, you know, he will reward you for your obedience. But I did not know that there were specific blessings, you know, associated with the Sabbath day. Yeah. So that's what we're going to um, get into. Um, we're going to primarily talk about these two verses, but we're going to jump over into Deuteronomy and some other places. But before we get um, started, with the lesson, I want to point out that this is for people who are already keeping a Sabbath day. I mean, if you're watching this video to get an idea of whether or not you should be keeping a Sabbath day or not, we got plenty of other videos to cover that. Mm -hmm. We definitely should be keeping the Sabbath day. Right. This one is for those who are already keeping the Sabbath day and want to get better at it. Mm -hmm. or, more of an advanced class. This is definitely an advanced class um, for those who are trying to improve their spiritual walk. Not necessarily those who need to be convinced that they need to get to walking. These are people who have been keeping the Sabbath day for a period of time, yet they don't see all of these blessings that we're going to talk about and they want to know what it is that they're supposed to be doing to receive these blessings. We're okay. going to find out they're pretty serious. Okay. All right, so let's start, if you would, uh, Stacy. if you would, read verse 13. If thou turn away thy feet from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on the holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Now, this phrase here begins with the word if. 
Mm-hmm. And as you heard me say plenty of times, if is the biggest word in the Bible. It gives you a choice. It gives you a choice. So if there's a lot dependent, I'm sure he, he's, he's making these statements, but these what comes out of this depends on if we will do what it's saying here. Mm-hmm. You know, one of these days, I, I've promised to do it, but there's so many words, if, in the Bible, but I wanted to do a study just on the word if. Okay. If, if you do this, he will do that. Right. Because the Bible will never come back void. Mm-hmm. So if we, in fact, do what he's saying, we can definitely expect to get what he's offering us. Is it true, I've heard people say this, that... Uh, most of the scriptures come with the father saying, if you do this, I will do that. Well, I would say yes. Um, this is the first time I've heard that. But I would agree because the whole Bible is dependent on whether or not we will comply with the scripture, whether we will you know, do what it say. Right. Um, this is why so many people have trouble with stuff like sabbatical years and Sabbath days and all of that, especially the Gentiles. They'll go in and they'll try to find evidence of some of these things taking place like a sabbatical year. But what they don't realize is some of this stuff don't apply to Gentiles. Mm-hmm. A lot of this stuff only applies to those who are keeping the covenant. In fact, I will go as far as say the promises of the Bible are only for those who are keeping the covenant. I would agree. Uh, else, I mean, you count it as a rebel and you may need to turn to the Illuminati scripture or something like that for your instruction because this book is all about the law, mm-hmm. talking about the Bible. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he said, if you turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, let's break some of this down. What is it saying here? Turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. So if you stop keeping it, stop obeying and observing the Sabbath day. Um, no, actually, I think that's opposite, Chris, because he's talking about these blessings that we're going to get if we do these things. And of course, if we stop keeping the Sabbath day, we're not going to get blessed. Okay. Yeah. But I'm looking here at another translation to see if it helps any. The New International Version says, if because of the Sabbath you restrain your foot from doing as you wish on my holy day. Hmm. So in other words, if you actually start keeping the Sabbath day, Mm -hmm. right? It's written a little bit, you know, you can understand why, why, you know, it could cause a little bit of confusion. Right. But it's definitely saying if you start to keep the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So if we turn away... From doing our own will on the Sabbath day. The next phrase, if we turn away from doing our pleasure on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean when it says, doing thy pleasure? Mm. He's he's obviously saying we shouldn't be doing our pleasure. But what does it mean to do our pleasure? Um, When I think of doing your own, your pleasure is like uh, doing what you want doing what you um, want to do that day. Now, while we're talking about pleasure, I want to come over to a book called The Shepherd of Hermes. And we're looking here in the third book of The Shepherd of Hermes called Similitudes, where the shepherd is explaining to Hermes what a pleasure is. And basically what Hermes is told is that a pleasure is anything that you will do willingly. Hmm. In other words, like you say, anything that you'll want to do is a pleasure. Right. Like, for instance, riding my bicycle may be a pleasure, mm-hmm. or reading a book may be a pleasure, or watching a television may be a pleasure. Mm-hmm. But the question is, what is the difference between my pleasure and our Father's pleasure? Okay. Because when we come back over here, it says, turn away from doing my pleasure on His holy day. Right. So it doesn't say turn away from pleasure. Right. And that's important. Right. Somebody's going to be sitting there thinking that, you know, they can do no pleasurable thing if they don't get this understanding that he's saying your pleasure. So how do you go about doing that? Well, you have to understand what is his pleasure and what's our pleasure. Right. I had a viewer who at one time um, was chiming in to a lot of the Sabbath days videos asking about weightlifting. Mm-hmm. He was really into weightlifting, and he wanted to know if he could weight lift weights on a Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. And 
but immediately I thought, you know, of work, you know, and the physics definition of work, and then I'm, you know, trying to see how this fits in because it's not real work, but he's definitely doing something. Right. But I don't know that the work path would have been what should have changed his mind. It is the pleasure path that should have changed his mind. Mm -hmm. From the way I understood, lifting weights was a pleasure to him. Right. And so just like riding my bike or anything like that for his enjoyment, that's not really the enjoyment of the father for me to ride my bicycle. Right. However, listening to the scripture on the audio book is definitely a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something that he would appreciate me doing on the Sabbath day. Right. So I think what we have to do is look at what it is that we want to do on the Sabbath day and try to understand, or is this something that is a pleasure for him or is it merely just a pleasure for us? Right. So stuff like watching a television, I don't think he would appreciate that. Well, I'm sitting here looking at the word pleasure and I'm thinking that it derived out of the word pleased. So we are to do things that will be pleasing unto him. Yeah, you know, not necessarily pleasing unto us, but right. pleasing unto him. Right. And, you know, so this is a very important thing to understand, you know, as we think about what it is that we're going to be doing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think this is one of the areas that we have gotten in trouble is because we have been in pursuit of our own pleasure. Yeah, we've been taking resting as doing whatever we want. To whatever do. we want to do. You know, we do a lot of work here on the Hillbilly Homestead. And when we get ready to rest. Um, and especially when we have a Sabbath day, it's been in the past, and the purpose of this video is that that changes. It's been in the past that, you know, like you said, we would do stuff that we wanted to do, whether it's watch YouTube videos or whether it's play our video games or, you know, catch up on the news or whatever it was. Yarning, yeah. crocheting, you know, games. Yeah. And we thought we were in compliance with the scripture because we weren't working. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we were in pursuit of our own pleasure. Right. And I believe that was holding us up from these blessings that we're going to talk about. Okay. Then it says, and call the Sabbath a delight. Now, this too, I believe some of us have struggled with. I know at first I struggled with it, it yeah. because we were just so used to doing whatever you know coming out of church we were so used to coming home from church and you do whatever you want to yeah that's the day to mow the grass yeah, yeah mowing grass and washing cars and that's the day yeah yeah and go do some shopping yeah, yeah do all, all the little stuff. stuff that you didn't catch up on during the during the other days and so when sabbath day would come around i would be fidgety i would be ready yeah. for it to be over with so i can yeah. go back and go you know go on and do what i had to yeah do. i mean you got so much trouble with your broom mm -hmm. you just can't help yeah, but can't doing stop something sweeping. Yeah. yeah just yeah but and then even when you start to learn better about the sabbath day a lot of times it's and i don't want to you know get myself in trouble with my words here but a lot of people, myself included, may not call it a delight because, like you say, you can't do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and you find yourself looking at the clock going, you know, how many minutes do we have left before the Sabbath day is over? Right. Well, that, too, I believe is hindering our blessings. What we need to do going forward is understand how it is that we can make the Sabbath day delightful to us. Mm -hmm. you know, even though I don't have my TikTok videos and even though I don't have my bicycle, um, I need to develop something. This is why we, we prepare. I need to have something going on that's going to be delightful to me so that the entire day will be called a delight. Yeah. So this is going to take some work and some planning. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's that. Like I said, that's what this is all about. Um, well, I mean, it's easy to stop working. It's easy to not cook. Mm -hmm. It's easy to not light a fire. All being don't do commands. Now we're talking about the do do commands. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the work comes in into making it a delightful day. Holy unto the Lord. Yeah. And of course, holy means what? Set apart. Separate and set apart. So it's a different kind of day. And so whereas all week long, 
I have been doing, you know, my pleasure. But on this day, I got to do something different. That's what holy means is this going to be a different day. Mm -hmm. So if you come and you see me doing the exact same things I was doing yesterday, yesterday and the day before, I can't necessarily call it a holy day. Right. It's got to be something different about this day. It's just another day. Just another day. Honorable day. So this should be an honorable day. Right, like, like we said, these are due commands. What it is that we have to do, so there's going to be work involved in how to make this day an honorable day. Right, mm -hmm. and you know, we all ask you guys for you know suggestions in the comment section because mm -hmm. you know when we do these classes, it's not so much as we have the answer as we're looking for the answer. Mm -hmm. So we don't have prescripted you know answers for all of these as you can tell as we fumble for our words. Mm -hmm. But you guys, as you're watching this video, something may pop in your mind. How can you make the Sabbath day honorable, or what is that? What, what would that look like? Right. Or what would a dishonorable Sabbath day look like, so that we can, you know, do the opposite? Do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Because this is a requirement, and it says, "And shalt honor him." And this is talking about the Father. Mm -hmm. So this is a day that we're going to honor the Father. Not doing thy own ways. And he's emphasizing that once again. Once again, not doing our own ways. So he's given us six days to be ourself. This day is a separated, holy day, different. And we're not supposed to be doing our ways. We're actually supposed to be like a different person on this day. Yeah. Not really focusing on the things that I like, but on the things that he likes. I never thought about it like that. I know that, you know, I've read many, many, many times that the Sabbath day, you know, keep the Sabbath day holy, but you just never thought of it that you're supposed to keep it holy. <laughs> yeah, you never thought <laughs> never of it, thought, keep yeah, it holy. Yeah, keep it holy. Yeah. We forgot that... Um, the Sabbath day was supposed to be a holy day. We just thought of it as I get to sit down today yeah. Yeah. and just do what I want to. I get to lay in bed all day instead yeah. of reading the Bible and doing as the Father pleases. Right. It's yeah. just off. You're just glad to be out of work. Yeah. yeah. And it says again, um, or to say, not doing your own ways nor finding thine own pleasure. Mm -hmm. So this is important that we're not finding our own pleasures on the Sabbath days. Mm -hmm. Like Journey says, you know, we have this time that we can do what it is that we want. But instead of finding out what we want to do and what pleases us, we need to be looking for what pleases him. Right. And then this is the part that, you know, I know I have to work on where it says not speaking thine own words. Well, what does that mean? Well, I, you know, I, like you always try to tell me that I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, on the Sabbath day, I need to be talking his words, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, having a class on a scripture or maybe talking about, you know, something divine opposed to Auburn football. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that's not the day to talk about politics. That's not the day to talk about, you know, our plans for the work week and all of this. Those would be my words. He wants us to speak his words. So if we're talking on the Sabbath day, we should be talking scripture. Mm -hmm. I had to pause because I'm like, what is his words? His only words. If it's not our words, then it's his words and his words are scripture. It makes me think that this is the day and then, well, I think back to when the Messiah was at the temple on the Sabbath day, that this is the day to, when, you know, say for instance, and since you do go to church, this is the day to just be there reading scripture and scripture mm -hmm. only instead mm -hmm. of preaching, paper, yeah. you oh. know, yeah. instead of preaching, okay. you know, because you have, when you preach, the, the normal preacher, he preaches his words, okay. you know, he read a little bit of scripture, but then he, you know, expound on it in his own, yeah, own right. way, but this would be the day to just stand there and I guess just read scripture. Yeah. I, I don't know. And, you know, this, I've already been reducing the number of videos that I produce or record on the Sabbath day and so if what you're saying is true maybe I shouldn't be recording videos on the Sabbath day at all because mm -hmm. you know I'm speaking I'm speaking my words or adding my words to his I don't know uh, well normally I don't produce a video on the Sabbath day because I don't want somebody who was otherwise minding their own business 
all of a sudden getting an alert or a notification that I have right. published a video. Mm -hmm. And now, whereas they were, may have been in meditation and prayer, they're on YouTube watching videos. Right. You know, so um, that already makes it to where I don't really want to publish one or make it public. But I now need to go pray about whether I should be recording anything them at all. Okay. I would think that, yeah, that would be the day to do more studying than talking. Right. So, like we said, we're looking for areas to improve, and that may be one that I need. Well, there's definitely one that I need to think on. All right. Now, you see her right here? We got some young Bible readers in the audience. Mm -hmm. You see right here where it has a semicolon? Yes. That what that's saying is that this is not the end of the sentence. This these two verses actually make up the same sentence. The verses in the Bible are shorter compared to the verses in the Apocrypha because they've been cut up. They've yeah, broken up in the smaller sections. Three and four verses. Definitely, I've seen them. You know, four verses long for one sentence. And when you pop on and you look at the Shepherd of Hermes, you see why. Oh my goodness. Big long verse. <laughs> like a whole page is one oh, sentence. Yeah, oh, you know, <laughs> one verse take up the whole page. But anyway, as we get ready to look at the second part of this sentence, it's kind of changing gears just a little bit. If you would, go ahead and read verse 14. Then shall thy delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So, like we said, if is the biggest word in the Bible. Because you look at all this talking about there in verse 13. It's a lot of stuff going on in 13. But if you do those things in 13, look at all that happens to you in verse 14. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it says then. So, this is an if-then statement. Mm -hmm. If we can avoid our own pleasures and doing our own will and speaking our own words on the Sabbath days, if we can make a, it a delightful day and honor the Lord and, the, and keep it a holy day, like we read about in verse 13, we see down here in 14, he says, then we will delight ourselves in the Lord. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Delight ourselves in the Lord. Be happy serving the Lord. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, you see so many people in the world that have a problem with the with our Lord. You know, they don't really want to do what he say. They find the scripture to be a burden. Keep even keeping a Sabbath day is a burden for some people. Mm -hmm. Well, according to what we're reading here, one of the reasons why we don't take delight in the Lord is because we're not keeping the Sabbath day right. Right. I we mean, start we start to um like you said, think of it as a burden or we don't want to do it or we start, like if you are a child and your parents ask you to, you know, go and read and think about the Father, you start getting angry or, you know, you don't really want to. But, what? Well, yeah, but if that if we want that to change, if we want to take pleasure in the fact that He is our Father, appreciating Him and all that He does, then we got to do what? We don't have we to get this do, Sabbath day right. We got to do the things of thirteen. Yeah, we got to we got to improve on it. Um, like you said, this is for people who are already keeping the Sabbath day, so they're already you know doing stuff like not working and not cooking and not making fires and you know not um, um, uh, playing gates. house and yeah. all kinds of stuff, leaving the gates. Um, that stuff you know we've done for years, but we haven't really seen this delight in the Lord, mm -hmm. and so by improving our Sabbath day we can start to get that delight right have joy have joy about yeah. when you speak to other people about them it's not yeah I went to church or mm -hmm. yeah I've been yeah. studying or every time I start studying I go to sleep and but you have joy you know when you talk about them and telling people about them and they can see the joy on your face and you know that's having yeah. delight in it yeah and, then, and go ahead and then once you get happy about serving the Lord then following all the other laws come way easy. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's a great point. We learn that in other parts of Scripture that it's necessary to keep the Sabbath day right and it, to keep the other rules. If we can't get this one right, we're not going to get the other ones right. But what I think is interesting here is we may not even know what this delight looks like. Hmm. Um, we may not know what this delight looks like 
because we really haven't done what it takes to get this delight. Mm. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we may not even know what any of these blessings that we're going to hear about in verse 14. Um, all of these would be alien to us. Yeah, it would be, you know, kind something of. we got to see. Yeah, something that we, you know, all of a sudden we just start to get joyous about the yeah. Father. We'll know what's going yeah. on then if we have put forth the effort to get the Sabbath thing right. We'll notice that kind of thing when we see it. Mm -hmm. And he says, and I will cause thee to ride up on high places of the earth. What does that mean? Now, this is huge. I had to look this one up. Praise the Father. I looked up the word high places. Okay. And I actually found out what he's talking about. But just to read a little bit on, he says, And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. Mm -hmm. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. What he's talking about is the Song of Moses. Okay. In Deuteronomy chapter 32. Right. It's when Moses was... I think he was getting ready to, to leave them. Yeah, he was getting ready to leave them. If you go back if you go back to chapter thirty one, yeah, you see that this is the time when Moses was about to turn everything over to Joshua. You see you can see that there in verse seven. So the um rings are about to change hands here. And one of the things that Moses does before he leaves is he gives them this so called song of Moses. We, we hear about this in the book of Revelation, the Song of Moses. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the Illuminati has a hard time figuring out what the Song of Moses is because they don't really believe in covenants. Yeah. But anybody who keeps the covenants and believes the scripture, understanding Deuteronomy chapter 31, they know what the Song of Moses is. It's over here in chapter 32. But what I want to do is jump down to verse 9 because it's starting to talk about these high places. If you would, read verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. So he's talking about Israel. He's talking about Jacob here. Right. And, you know, when we think about Jacob and Israel in the same sentence, we often think about Jacob's trouble. Right. How during this tribulous period, Jacob is actually transformed into Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what he's talking about here, how he found Jacob in this wilderness. Yeah. And then he transformed him over to Israel. Right. Read verse 11. As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. So, like we said, this is the father who has come into Jacob's life and is now going to provide him with um, clothing and food. Right. All right, read verse 13. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. So when it's talking about over there in Isaiah about the high places, it's actually referring back to this. Okay. You saw over here high places, and then you see right here heritage of Jacob. Mm, okay. Yeah. So this is connection. This right. is what the scripture means by verse upon verse. Precept yeah. upon precept here a little, there a little. Right. We're going to have to go from Isaiah back over to Deuteronomy to understand what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And when he's talking about these high places, he says that he caused him to ride on high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the field. So here he's saying these high places are related to the increase of the field. So if you put like the word so in front of that, it would... I think it'll make it a lot more easier. He made him ride on the high places of the earth so that he might eat the increase of yeah. the fields. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. That's the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. You know that you are in these high places when you are eating the increase of the field. So think of that as a blessing. Right. You're yes. going from, you know, a state of not necessarily eating the increases of the field to getting them. Yeah. This is something you should definitely see. Yeah, that's it's, definitely a blessing. That's definitely a blessing. Um, and it says, and he made him to suck the honey out of the rock and the oil out of the flinty rock. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure what all of that's going to look like. Mm, but 
sounds like to me like you'll get blessings and food out of seemingly nowhere. Oh, oh that's right. a good point. Mm -hmm. um, like the father is saying, honey and oil, those are extremely important to, you know, our health. Yeah. We don't really know that because, you know, we use a lot of sugar here in America. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you ever contemplate the idea of going without sugar, you know, your mind should jump to honey. Right. And then, of course, the oil, we really can't live without that either. Yeah. It's very difficult. Some um, One of the children was talking, I think it was yesterday, they said, I remember when we tried to cook without oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite difficult. I mean, and the thing about it, society doesn't really understand this because they are not dependent on our father for their provisions. They're, they're dependent on the world system or the beasts to provide them with their provisions. Mm -hmm. And so they don't know the difficulties around honey and oil and sugar and all of that stuff. They never really had to deal without it. Right. But if they ever find themselves that way, especially like those of us who are trying to get away from the beast, we find these kind of things difficult. Well, if you want this honey, if you want this oil, if you want this increase of the feel, we're going to have to make the Sabbath day of delight. Right. Then he goes on. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. So not only is it your fields that are now producing abundantly, and you're getting food from, you know, rocks and all kinds of stuff, strange places. But now he's talking about your cattle. Right. A kind is a kind of a cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're getting, you know, the milk from the cow and the milk from the sheep and you got the lambs, you know. Mm -hmm. So so this is all about food and shelter. Right. So basically what he's saying, if we want the blessings that Jacob received, these high places, it's all about the Sabbath day. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of how simple it is. If we do this, then this will happen. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. um, we wish this was kind of taught more in our churches. A lot of people would wish they would know this kind of stuff, you mm -hmm. know. But, you know, like we said, the, the man behind the pulpit is kind of more dependent on the BC for his provisions than he is dependent on, you know, these so-called high places. So he really may not know about this. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But this is extremely important stuff, as we see. All of these blessings are associated with how we keep the Sabbath day. Mm. You want to have milk, you want to have honey, you want to be in high places, you want to eat the increase of the field. I believe we're going to have to work a little bit harder on preparing for the Sabbath day. Right. Right. So, like you guys, like we said, um, you guys, if you have any ideas or suggestions or anything, let's put them down in the comment section. You know, um, we could talk more about pleasure. We could talk more about delight. We could talk more about honorable, and you know, some of these other terms that we're really going to have to get a solid grasp on in order to make this Sabbath day delightful. Yeah. You know, let's help each other out, and then we can all start to see these blessings and these increases. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we're going to close it out there, and shalom. Shalom. shalom.